If we can pray. Gracious God, thank you for all the good things that you are in our lives and that you give to our lives. Thank you for this beautiful community of odd people and this, the odd things that they do and what we're celebrating today, the odd worship. We ask that you would bless this time and give us open minds and lots of laughter and open hearts. In your name, amen. So I understand you've already been reflecting on the words of the writer Flannery O'Connor who said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you odd. We're here this afternoon to remember the oddness that this church has, has participated in, to celebrate it, and to think about why we want to continue being odd. And just to get out, out there, the word odd may, to, may have too negative a meaning for some of you, and that's okay. We can say peculiar. We can say different. <laughs> the point is, though, oddness or peculiarity indicates being out of step somehow with a larger context. If you take a hard look at dominant American Christianity today, at our economic structure, at our, at our environmental destruction, at what we have done to other countries around the world in our greed and our arrogance, and at the way the most vulnerable in our society are treated, then it's not a bad thing to be odd. It has been said of this church, they'll love just about anybody. That's a beautiful compliment and a really odd practice. This is a place where it's okay to try something new, to shake up how things are normally carried out. Case in point, Cindy once preached a powerful sermon based on very good theology from Sesame Street. You do indeed have to put down the ducky if you want to play the saxophone. <laughs> Mike Evans once listed all the ways community could function based on different ship models. He said we could be a battleship or a speedboat or a barge, but finally settled on submarines as the best model because we're all in here together. Our worship included that morning, we all live in this yellow submarine. Terry mentioned the fact that We've actually done this song as a hymn of response. <laughs> I thought it was kind of odd at the time. But where I am today, this is, uh, I'm feeling good about it. It's <laughs> finally, finally some music and worship. I don't have any theological qualms about it. <laughs> Cindy was in there, um, and there was this homeless guy named Neil who 
was there. There was also a couple, <clears throat> a husband and wife, from Southern Seminary who were visiting. First time there. And Rob was leading the class, and he had folks go around the room and tell something about themselves, kind of who they were, and growing up, were you there, Rick? Or, yeah, so, so Neil said that he was an Army brat, had grown up in Germany, uh, where his parents were stationed. And he said that his, his, uh, his parents both worked for the CIA. And, uh, you know, the story starts out fairly normally, and folks are like, you know, these, this couple is sort of intently listening to this. And he said, and, and, uh, and there were always people after my parents. Uh, eventually, the CIA was actually after them. And when I was 10 years old, they were both mutilated. Um, and this couple just had this horrified look on their face. And we're kind of, you know, thinking, okay, um, we know a little bit about Neil. And he said, and then, you know, this terrible thing happened to his brother. And then five years later, my parents were mutilated again. <laughs> and this couple's eyes. <laughs> and everybody else in the class was just... <laughs> You know, and then Rob moved on to the next person. Like, this was something that anybody would say in any Sunday school class in any Southern Baptist church anywhere. And um, I'm not sure the couple actually stayed for worship, but I know they never came back. <laughs> so we would, we would do the same thing that we do now uh, when we had communion. We would make a circle, if you can imagine, around that room. So we're, here we are all in a circle for communion. Now, at that time, uh, I, that Sunday, I happened to be doing following Cindy with the cup. I was, I had the cup, so um, there was a, a mentally ill guy. So we're doing communion. Cindy's a couple of paces ahead with the bread. We did it like we do now, in tinction, dun, 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 uh, dunking the bread uh, in the cup and then and taking your communion that way. And so Cindy's a couple of paces ahead with the bread. This homeless guy is, er, has taken this piece of bread, rather large piece of bread, and before I'm coming around a few paces behind with the cup, he has stuck it in his mouth and is chewing it. Well, when I get around with the cup, he <laughs> spits it out <laughs> this chewed mass of bread and is getting ready to dunk it in the cup. And for this fleeting second, I had this thought, what would Jesus do? <laughs> but then, <laughs> the heck of that, I yanked the cup away. <laughs> <laughs> 